Okay, today I'm gonna give you four exercises to help you with your VMO, which is one of your quadriceps, to try and get that activated and stronger, depending on what level you're at in recovery. We're gonna start with this one. Now, when I say VMO, I mean quads, but we talk about the VMO because with knee pain, that's usually the first one that gets weaker, not your lateral. So your medial, with vastus medialis, is usually the one that is deactivated, if you like, or loss in tone, atrophied with pain injury. So we focus on that. The movements you do activate all the quadriceps, but it's the isolation of the quads without too much load on the knee is how we're gonna get it better. Many people do quadriceps strengthening under load and they've got knee pain and it doesn't work. So we're gonna do that a little bit different. So your first one is your basic stuff. And now this is when you're really struggling with terminal knee extension, okay? So being able to get your knee extended like that. What I suggest you do is focus on this one to start with. If you're a beginner, focus on this. You're trying to get the quadriceps extending the knee. So to do that, what I suggest you use a roll towel like this, on a bench or a sofa or your bed, that sort of thing, even on the floor. But what you're trying to do is when you extend your knee like that, okay, you've got to do two things. You've got to lift your toes up. That's going to give you a little bit more go here. The other thing I want you to try and do is when you, to try and extend your knee, you try and push down into the towel. So if you relax now for me, what you're going to try and do is thinking, I'm going to push down first. You watch, see how she activates, bang, straight away. When she pushed down, her brain said, use this. So we already get it firing from just pushing down. So once you've got that, do that again. She doesn't raise this yet. She just gets a push down, so gets it half going. Then she then thinks about raising that to get the full tone in that VMO and your quads through there. So as you notice, this is no load here. This is just to try and get things flying. Some people, this is all they can tolerate. So putting no load on someone is quite a good thing. If you think you're past that, we're gonna move on to some terminal knee extension and standing with some load. But that is the first thing I would start with. Second thing, if you ever stand up, is we're gonna use an isometric load. Now, th those ones you can do for sort of 10 seconds, 30 seconds. Then you need to add some load on. You can use a little ball like that, a little Pilates ball, or you can use a Swiss ball. I'll show you the Pilates ball first. With this one, you're gonna put it behind the knee because you need some resistance into extension. So she's gonna push into that. So that goes behind the knee. Now, the position of the foot is quite crucial. If you have the foot too far forward, you're not gonna get much load. If you have it too far back, you can't get full terminal knee extension. So she's gonna place her foot and work out how far away from the wall does she need to put her foot. And then the ball sits above the knee. Don't make the mistake having it below the knee, have it above the knee, especially for those ACL people. And what she's gonna try and do is push against the ball. See, then she switches it on, all right? Once she's got some power through there, she's really got to think about putting some weight through her heel. Okay, so down through the heel and think about loading back and crushing that ball if you like. Now, you'll find you even use your glute with this. That's okay. But crushing the ball is the key and you've got to try and hold on for at least 10 seconds. You're trying to build to 30. And it's the maximum that you can do for 30 seconds, okay? So you've got to, you can't overcook it in the first 10 and realize you're fatiguing. So how hard can you squeeze that and keep that tone on Always think about driving it backwards, as though you're sort of like a car's ran up against the wall and you're spinning the tires. You've got to keep working on it and get the fatigue here without the pain, okay? So it's about muscle fatigue without the knee pain. And then once she does that, she rests, let it go. I would go for half the time rest. If you went for 30 seconds, rest it for 15. If you went for 10 seconds, rest it for five. You're trying to get at least three sets of that to get some decent muscle work in there. Remember, that's all isometric, but at least this has got some loading here, which will give you a little bit of muscle strength. So once you've done those two, then it's time to start actually using the quad in a squat position. Now, normally, if, to get, if this one's down, just doing normal squats with load is not gonna work. So what you need to do is single legs. So come over here for me, Pam. With the single leg work, what she's gonna try and do is use a power band like this. Okay, pop that in that leg there as the resistance now, okay? And again, same drill, try and keep that above the knee, so up on the top of the hamstring, or bottom of the hamstring there, top of the knee there. She's gonna do a step down. Now, the reason we're doing that, single leg squat, okay, because we wanna do one leg, not two legs. The band load is to make more load for the quads while she's doing the squat. What you don't wanna do is put more load down, like holding weights to get more quads at this stage, because usually these people are dealing with knee pain. So the load that way 
is means she's going to have to force her knee into extension more when she stands up, which is going to automatically, as you saw, fire her quad. So this is a much better way of doing this sort of early intervention work. If she's past those two stages, is this is the next thing to go for. Okay, so start position is standing on one leg and making sure she can balance and keep her knee in line. She goes through a normal single leg squat, bending the knee, sitting back at the hips, shoulders forward. She reaches back with the back foot, but remember, she's not allowed to put weight through that. She can tap it for reassurance, but when she comes back up, then she aims to straighten her knee. So then you get the strengthening of that band. She gets it all the way through, but she gets more when she straightens it. So then she does the control work, and now this is the interesting part. As she bends her knee, she's controlling it into flexion. She's using her quads to stabilize that knee as well as extend the knee. Okay, so you're getting a double whammy with this. One, you're getting strengthening, but you're learning to control the knee via using the quads, controlling that flexion as she goes in that squat, reaching back, don't put any weight through there. And then as she comes up, drive through the heel, push your knee back. It's super effective. And it's really nice for those people who are trying to get their, their quads on more in a single leg position, okay? Much better than just doing weights in a squat. So that's a really nice third one to do. Once you've done that, okay, and things are going well, then you need to go open chain. So this is for the sort of high level stuff. But what we're gonna do is keep it eccentric. So come out of that for me. So you go back to the bench, all right? or your sofa or your chair, or maybe it's in the gym. With this one, probably choose a little bit lighter band for this. You've got to be careful how heavy you go with this one. So with this band here, what we're going to do is leg extensions, or knee extensions, but we're going to do it eccentrically. So we're just going to focus on the down phase. So I'd put that around there. Trick is flip it around the front of that foot there. Make sure it's sort of down around the ankle a little bit more. Okay, so she's going to help herself with this leg, push herself into extension. Okay, so you go right up into extension, toe up, high scan. The trick is really cranking this quad and holding it there for an isometric of maybe two seconds, and then slowly bending the knee. There's the eccentric phase there. You can see that quad working really hard as she lowers her knee into flexion. All right, and then instead of coming out again, she assists out. So it's a little bit of a rest period here which allows you to do maximal load on the way down with a rest period in every rep. Okay, so you can really focus on the squeeze here and then coming down. Now those of you who are weak, you'll see this muscle dance around again, okay? It'll just sort of like this until it's strong and then it'll stop doing that. You can see with Pam's here, solid as, and as she lowers, it's pretty smooth there. There's a little bit of a shake, but it's pretty damn good. Okay, so that would be your sort of fourth one I do for your quads work. Once you've done that, then you're more likely, you're more ready to go into some more conventional strengthening for the knee. Hope that helps. See you next time.